Hi again, it's Michael. This is the sixth and final video in a series about Aurora photography and making time lapses. Before this, I showed off LR time lapse and two other methods using Adobe Camera Raw and After Effects. But this time we're going to make a time lapse from a sequence of JPEG files using nothing but free software for Windows 10. So now for the final and really inexpensive way to do this. Uh, well, in other words, free software. I'm gonna launch a program called Virtual Dub. And in Virtual Dub, we're going to take a JPEG sequence. If you are working with RAW files, you can just manipulate them in the free software that came with your camera to change them into JPEGs, but we have to work with JPEG files in this case. Either take the JPEG files that you took with your camera or export the RAW files that you have to JPEG. And then we're going to open a video file, but instead of opening a video, we're gonna open a JPEG sequence. And as long as they're in alphabetical or numeric order, then Virtual Dub will be able to open it. So we're just gonna select the first image in the sequence, and there we go. I'm gonna reduce the size of these just a little bit. We can play it back, and sure enough, there we go. It looks like a video file, and that's great, but we need to make a few changes. The frame rate by default is gonna be 10 FPS. We don't want that, we want 23.976. Because I'm just being consistent across the board, you can do 24 or 60, whatever you want. Hit okay. So now we're gonna add a filter to resize the video. We're gonna choose resize, and I'm going to change the absolute dimensions to 1920, which will automatically change it to 1920 by 1440. But let's crop this to 16 by nine. I'll just do a show preview, yeah, that looks right. So now what we'll have is an automatically cropped output to 1920 by 1080. So we're doing this filter to resize and crop the video at the same time. Now, the only export option for Virtual Dub is to save as an AVI, which is a really old school, uncompressed format, which makes enormous file sizes. Aurora over Lake. All right, so now it's gonna save this entire JPEG sequence as an uncompressed AVI file. Like I said, uncompressed AVI is gigantic. We're gonna end up with about a two gigabyte file for just a 10 second image sequence. So what we need to do is use another program to then encode it in H.264 so that we have a workable video file that we can upload to YouTube or add to Windows Movie Maker if we want. All right, we've saved our AVI file, so now I'm going to close Virtual Dub. Here it is. And the file is so huge that you know computers struggle to even play it back. It's really herky-jerky. It's fine how it is. In fact, I can back up and play it and now it works but we need this to be an MP4 file so that uh, it's usable. So I'm gonna launch another free program called Handbrake. So let's get that going. And I'm just gonna save the path. And in Handbrake, all we need to do then is drag our AVI file to this window. And we need to make a couple of quick changes. Uh, the preset right now is set to 1080p 30, which isn't exactly what we, we are looking for. So let's go to our video tab and change the frame weight to 23976. We'll do constant frame rate and uh, you can change the quality. Let's set it to a high quality here. And then let's browse and save the file over here, I'm gonna use the file name extension of MP4, save, and then we're going to start our encode. So, I mean, it's really easy, right? So we're just importing a JPEG sequence into a program called Virtual Dub, resizing and cropping it to the size that we need, saving that as an AVI file, and then delivering that into Handbrake and re-encoding it as an H.264. Just like every other program we are working with, we have to be consistent with our frame rate so we don't end up with a herky-jerky looking, uh, terrible looking quality video. So now I'm gonna play it back and there you go. A nice smooth Aurora time-lapse made with free software, Virtual Dub and Handbrake. Now you'll notice I didn't have any steps along the way where I could uh, manipulate the brightness or or contrast or fix vignette or anything like that. Uh, 
some of that you can do in the early stages when you're converting your raw file to a JPEG sequence. So it's not like you can't do it, you just have to do it uh, very early in the process using the free software that comes with your camera. And that's it, that's three different methods to make a time-lapse and specifically an Aurora time-lapse using the gear that you have and with whatever amount of money you wanna spend.